Hi, Coach. Hello. You ready for some questions? Yep. All right, well, let's open it up with uh, Matt Preem from 247 Sports. Dan, it's just good to see the, the ball go in the hoop and the, the effects that has on the team's energy the rest of the way. Absolutely. It's, um, it's been a long two weeks, and um, you know, the guys really struggled through it and um, hadn't been easy on us. So uh, it was good to get some energy, make some shots. The ball movement was much better tonight. Um, you know, so I, I think we did a little better job. Uh, and Folly makes a difference when we can play through him a little bit more. Um, so, yeah, no, I uh, thought we took a step in the right direction. We've got a long ways to go. We still are not a good basketball team, uh, but it was definitely a, a step in the right direction. Shane Hoffman, Daily Emerald. Uh, Will was a lot more aggressive on his shots tonight. Um, after you know not shooting the ball too much over the last four, I'm just curious: is, is that something you talked to him about, or was that just kind of his own mindset changing after that kind of slump there? Well, part of it was my fault, and you know, I just you know didn't run enough stuff for him. I didn't put him in enough positions to to be aggressive, and uh, you know he missed a few shots early in a couple of those ball games, and and uh, didn't get aggressive. But I sure didn't help him out. And, uh, you know, that's something as a coach, you got to, you know, you got to work with guys. You got to admit when you don't get in a position to be successful. And, uh, you know, part of the part of the problem was was me you know, not getting him in the right position, not making him be aggressive. And, um, you know, yeah, we talked about it. We spent a long time talking after the Houston game. He came to my room and, you know, we talked about a lot of things, but, uh, uh, you know, I thought we ran a few things for him. He was more aggressive, did some nice things. So, uh, you know, I thought he took a step. James Krapia, the Oregonian. Dana, you touched on a little bit there, but take a in a little bit into some of these conversations after, after the games in Vegas, at least either the post game or, in the days since Thanksgiving, when you guys have been back at practice, of just what the tone and tenor has been like, how much character building, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, has been going on uh, over the last week in particular of how this team is able to respond in the way it did tonight, but still has, like you say, a long ways to go. You know, I, you know, I told the guys, um, you know, I've my teams over, you know, forty-two years and. 33 years doing this at this level, we, we've been beat before, but I was just disappointed in the way we competed. You know, um, we, we faced adversity and we didn't handle it well. And uh, that was my biggest complaint. I've always said, you know, there are going to be games you don't shoot it well. And if you just give it in, give into it in games, you don't shoot it well, don't rebound, don't defend. Uh, you're not going to be a good team. You can't have a good team. You're just going to wait for the night you shoot it well. Uh, you're not going to have a good basketball team. And I told him, you know, I, I've talked about that since the start of practice. You know, you, you've got to do the things you control a little bit more than scoring and uh, rebound the ball, defend your tail off, no matter if the ball's going in or not. And we have done a poor job of that. Uh, I haven't been able to convince them you know, that that's the way we've got to do it. And again, we, we all share that responsibility, but again, um, you know, I've, I've got to make sure the message gets across and, you know, we haven't connected. You know, the team hasn't connected with each other and they haven't connected with myself and my staff. And, you know, that's always important, you know, and we, We've had problems before in years past where we weren't connected and the guys came along and we got connected and we, we worked things out. Um, and I'm hoping this group uh, will do that. There is no guarantee. Every, every group dynamic is different. Every team's different. So uh, I believe they will, but there is no guarantee. And we're going to have to bring it tomorrow in practice. We're going to have to bring it Wednesday night against Riverside and, 
then we got to get ready for our first conference game on Sunday. So uh, it was a start. It was a move in the right direction. Uh, but we had a long ways. To, we got a long ways to go because uh, uh, we've we've dug ourselves a hole in the last two weeks. Zach Neal, Ducks Wire. You got some good production from Dante tonight in his minutes. Um, I'm curious if you could assess how you think he's progressing and if uh, we might see that limit restriction uh, removed going forward or at least bumped up. Oh no, it's it's it, it'll be a slow process. Um, um, I'm not sure the exact time frame. But as I mentioned before, we'll be really conservative. We won't let him get fatigued. Uh, you know, we could have went a few more minutes than we played him. I think we played him 15 or 16. We could have went a few more minutes tonight. Uh, but with the game right away on Wednesday, I, I didn't feel it was necessary. So, um, you know, we'll gradually move him to 20. But uh, I think it'll be a while before we get over 20. Chris Hansen, register guard. Yeah, Danny, when you see that 41 to 15 rebound advantage, you know, what does that what does that mean to you? Is it just a, a size advantage you had over them, or were you guys just performing really well on the boards? No, I think it was the size. You know, um, you know, we were up 10 at half on the boards, uh, and then 16, you know, with Nate really did a nice job. You know, Nate's had a couple good weeks of practice here. He's getting better and being more physical. Isaac's getting better, being more physical. Uh, we had a problem with physicality with both those guys, but they're, they're lower in their base. They're being a little bit more athletic. You know, I like the progress they both made here in the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, so uh, mostly size, but, you know, I thought we went after it better. And, uh, you know, when the ball's going in, you know, young players, you know, get more energized and, and as I mentioned earlier, you know, good teams, doesn't matter if the ball's going in or not, they just play. Uh, teams that aren't as connected, uh, maybe young, inexperienced, not together, uh, they give into it. And we obviously have given into it a number of times. Graham Metzger, Ducks Digest. Coach, congrats on the win tonight. The full court press was really working well tonight. You forced 13 total turnovers. Uh, Jacob Young had four steals of his own. And you guys kept the full court press going uh, even when you were up big. Can you talk about what the press does for you guys' defense as a whole? Well, I, I think we took it off with six minutes ago, but I wanted everybody to get a chance to work on it. Um, you know, I wanted everybody to have a chance to, to work on that defense in a game situation. Uh, shoot, we haven't scored enough points to set our press, you know, so we needed some work on it. And um, so I wanted everybody to get an opportunity, especially those freshmen late, uh, to run the press and, and then get back and put our defense together. So I think with six minutes or so, five minutes, we came off just to, you know, because uh, we had a sizable lead. But uh, again, that's, it's a work in progress. Um, it has been great to us in the past. It's who we are. You know, we we got to be who we are. And, uh, you know, the press has always been a big part of our, our defense, changing things up. And uh, we got some guys that, you know, have never done it. Uh, I'm not sure they quite believe in it. Um, but, you know, those, those are the connective things that I talked about that we've got to do. Um, I hope with a little success here in December, hopefully we'll build it back and those guys will understand how important the press is to us. Austin Oda, KWVA. Hey, Coach. Uh, uh, so you played a bunch of different lineup variations tonight. Uh, two of the ones that I thought were really interesting were uh, surrounding uh, and following Dante with four guards early in the first and then uh, late in the second, having three bigs with uh, Young and Suarez. Can you just uh, talk through how uh, you felt the the success of those lineups win in contrast with each other? Well, you know, we're going to be working through December and probably into January with, with different combinations. And, you know, if guys earn that in practice, you know, we want to give them that opportunity. <clears throat> and, and so, um, you know, Waldo's practice well, Isaac's practice well, Nate's practice better. So we wanted to give them that opportunity. And, 
you know, we'll take a look at it uh, tonight, you know, on some film and tomorrow morning and, um, you know, see what we liked about different combinations and, uh, you know, move forward, you know, with those combinations. But, uh, you know, I, I want to give guys a chance that have earned it in practice. And uh, tonight we had that opportunity. Is that it? James, you got one more there? Yeah, Todd's muted. Matt, you gonna? Oh, that's on me, my bad, sorry. Yeah, Dana, just, you mentioned a lot in Vegas and at BYU, the, the lack of playmaking for others. 16 assists tonight, is, is that a byproduct of those guys getting that message? Well, I thought it was a byproduct of better movement. You know, our ball movement was better. Our player movement was better. We spent a lot of time on it, you know, after Thanksgiving there, Friday and Saturday, uh, just trying to get some ball movement. Um, you know, it's hard to score against set defense, especially, you know, a defense like Houston. If you if you try to just attack on one side and you don't make those guys move, uh, their physicality, you know, will just beat you up. And uh, when we played here a couple of years ago, we did a great job moving the ball side to side and, you know, we were successful. And when we played them in Houston, the second half, we got that ball moving. And, and I talked about that with the fellows, but again, that connection's not there. Um, that's something we got to work on. Um, you know, and I, you know, I, I, I misjudged some things, um, you know, and Folly missed the whole summer. Frank missed the whole summer with, you know, stress reaction in his leg and sprained ankle. Quincy missed the whole summer with the knee. Um, Eric was, you know, working academically to get some things worked out so he wasn't around as much as possible, you know, as much as he should have been. So, you know, I thought we'd make quicker strides. And, uh, you know, a coach with my experience should have known better. You know, just uh, didn't do it, you know. So, uh, I've told the guys, you know, it's as much on me as it is on you, but we're going to compete. You know, we're going to figure out a way to, you know, get after people even when we don't score well. Uh, you know, we've, we've got to turn it around. And uh, I hope the guys believe it. Uh, it was a step in the right direction, but we've got so many steps to make. You know, I'm not saying we accomplished anything. We just made a step in the right direction. And we've got so many steps to make. So, uh, but we needed this. Uh, we absolutely needed something positive, something in the right direction. And we got that. And now we need to do the same thing tomorrow in practice. And we need to do the same thing Wednesday night and keep moving forward. And uh, that's our challenge. And uh, we've got a tremendous amount of work ahead of us. Last question, James. Not about one guy specifically, Dana, uh, in terms of, I'm not trying to like assign blame or something, but Quincy's numbers just aren't really in line with what he had done before. And uh, obviously he's a better shooter than he's shown even at times, better rebounder certainly than he has shown so far. Is that kind of, like you mentioned before, guys who hadn't necessarily done the press a lot, is this kind of feeling out defensively where he's supposed to fit when he's used to a two, three, and then that's impacting when the offense isn't there. One's kind of compounding on the next, and it's it's just kind of feeling out the, the process right now. Well, you know, part of the reason he came here, James, is he saw the adjustment that Eugene made, you know, playing all inside, you know, to move his game outside a little bit. And it's not like a light switch where you just go, okay, I've played a four, and now I want to play on the perimeter, and I just flip a switch. And he struggled – so far with that adjustment and you know he's not close enough to the basket so he's not attacking the offensive glass like he did a great job at Syracuse offensive rebounding was how he got his points and you know when he's moved further away from the basket he's just he's not used to going from a you know a perimeter position you know Chris Boucher got really good at it you know moving from the outside going and getting offensive rebounds and we, we've just got to get a better job of getting him comfortable. But you can see, you know, passing and catching on the perimeter, moving the ball. He's not quite comfortable with it yet. And, 
you know, he's, he's taken too many threes. Uh, he hasn't gone inside enough. You could tell we tried to get him inside on the block a little bit tonight uh, to get him going. Um, but that's, you know, you just, like I said, you don't change from an inside guy to a perimeter guy overnight. It takes years. And we've got to play to his strengths more and work on his weaknesses. And again, him not working out with this all summer didn't help that. And then he missed practices in October because, you know, he was some tendonitis. So again, that's misjudgment on my part, James, you know, to, to think he could make that drastic of a, of an improvement. And uh, we kind of tricked ourselves in the first ball, couple ball games. We got off to great starts and, you know, I told our guys, we don't, on his front runners, we, we want to be fighters all the time, whether we're things are going good for us or not. And, you know, that's something we've, we've got to learn to do. And we've got to have tremendous leadership to do that. And uh, we've been fortunate in the past. We've always had guys that were really competitive. Eugene, Chris, LJ, Eric's competitive. Will's competitive. But you got to bring those qualities out. you got to show everybody and – like I told him before the game, fellas, I know we can compete. I've seen you compete in practice every day. I've seen you compete. We just got to go prove to people that we can compete. And uh, we, we got to get that back. You know, everybody uh, is questioning us. And that's, we deserve that. And so now we just, we got to fight back. And uh, uh, I think our guys will do that. I, I think they will. And uh, tonight, like I said, was just the first step. We got so far to go. Uh, but tonight we needed to make a step. And uh, I think our guys did. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate your time. Congrats on the win. All righty. Thanks.